Hey guys, so apparently seaweed is amazing. Apparently, if you give some to cows, incorporate it into their diet, it will drastically reduce their methane emissions. And by drastically, I mean like 99% reduction. Wow. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Researchers at James Cook University in Queensland, Australia, found the addition of less than 2% dried seaweed to a cow's diet could reduce their methane emissions by as much as 99%. No, they didn't though. They found that adding seaweed to a glass simulated stomach drastically reduced methane production for a period of time. And clearly a glass bottle is not a cow. And doing this, like actually doing this, actually replacing a portion of the cow's diet with seaweed, this may actually, I've said actually a lot, uh, compromise fermentation by reducing the production of volatile fatty acids, which are the primary source of dietary energy in ruminants. Specifically for the low quality roughage, which is the most affordable and most sustainable feed. So there are trade-offs. You know, the seaweed may lead to a reduction in methane, but it also means that the cows now need more roughage to compensate for the reduced efficiency. We're talking about a very delicate microbiome that has evolved over millions of years to optimize efficiency of fermentation of these otherwise really poor quality food sources. This is important because how it works, how this seaweed is able to basically make the cows produce less methane, it's essentially chemical warfare with microbes. It is known that the antibacterial defense mechanism of asparagopsis is predominantly a result of the secondary metabolite bromoform, naturally present in the macroalgal biomass. Not everything that's naturally occurring is healthy, obviously. Bromoform, in this case, is a known animal carcinogen. Bromoform is similar chemically and in anti-methanogenic potency to that of bromochloromethane. In previous in vivo experiments investigating enteric methane abatement, BCM-induced abatement in Brahmin steers of 93% and 50% after separate 28 and 90 days feeding regimes, respectively. However, BCM has been banned from manufacture and use in Australia due to its contribution to ozone depletion. The mode of action of BCM was described previously as the inhibition of the methanogenic pathway at the final step by inhibition of the cobamide-dependent methyl transfer step in release of methane. This sounds an awful lot like the effects of most antibiotics, which interfere with one part or another of metabolism or homeostasis. And so it's no surprise that after 90 days of adapting to this new environment, the new environment of BCM, that these methane-producing microbes were ramping up production again. Just like with antibiotics, the seaweed becomes less and less effective. Methane production for treated steers was reduced significantly compared with control steers by approximately 58% after 30 days. However, the effect of BCM in mitigating methanogenesis was reduced to 38% after 60 and 90 days respectively. This is a short-term solution and a very expensive one since it may require, again, feeding the cows high quality roughage and also 2% dried seaweed instead of the cheap BCM. It's also not clear just how much of this substance, this potentially carcinogenic substance, will show up in the meat. The study on BCM showed that it did in a small amount, even at those levels. It's also important to note that the researchers are looking at finishing. So this slight reduction in methane is not for the whole lifespan of the cow, you know, a grazing cow consuming roughage. This is only for finishing. And we can only guess what will happen when whatever genes develop to get around this interference, this seaweed interference, you know, become widespread. Prophylactic antibiotics haven't exactly worked out that well in animal agriculture. This is ongoing research, and you know what, maybe one day this will actually be used to cut down on methane production during, you know, a couple months of finishing by like 50% or so, which is itself a small fraction of the amount of methane that a cow produces in its lifetime, particularly if it's grazing. So if we're lucky, maybe we'll see like a 10% reduction from this someday. Obviously every little bit helps, but that conclusion is nothing like the 99% claims, these super sensationalist claims, and it's certainly nothing like giving up beef or going vegan. If we actually care about doing something today, doing something about climate change and greenhouse gas emissions today, then we really need to stop eating cows. So I guess that's it. Um, it is interesting, you know, people sharing this article. It's it's another one of those, haha, checkmate vegan, like I can eat meat and it's totally environmentally sustainable. 
And it's like, but you know, this this isn't being done yet, right? <laughs> like this isn't even close to being actually applied anywhere. Like the meat you're eating now, it didn't come from a cow that was consuming any like seaweed. Like what? <laughs> it's just like feeling better about bad choices today because those bad choices could possibly, maybe, potentially, perhaps be less bad in the future, maybe, possibly, perhaps. It's just so, so bizarre. I guess it's not that bizarre, right? I mean, we're really, really driven to feel better about, about any potential bad habits, right? I mean, any, anything that can tell us, oh no, those habits actually aren't bad. They're actually the best, keep doing them. <laughs> I mean, that's way more appealing than like, no, it's bad, you should change your ways. I mean, no one, no one wants to do that, right? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments and questions down below. Subscribe, subscribe. Uh, you can support the channel at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Oh, the channel actually has a new URL. It is no longer the old URL. So it used to be if you made like a custom URL for your channel, which I did years ago. If you did that, there was like no going back, right? I mean, I think I read like if you had a bajillion subs, maybe YouTube would let you do it. And it was like, okay, I'm just always gonna have this URL, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then like a few days ago, I sign into my YouTube and Google's like, hey, guess what? You can have a new URL. It's like, what? Now they don't let you actually pick it. They give you some options. So it's like based on your old one. And then, and I guess based on, yeah, I guess based on your old one and then like your current name. So it was like a natural vegan. It's like, wow, what? So. It, I'm now youtube.com slash unnatural vegan. So that's, I'm the only person excited about this I'm realizing.